At the end of the Second World War, and emerging from nearly four decades of brutal Japanese occupation, the Korean Peninsula found itself torn between two foreign ideologies from the Soviet Union and the United States. Following Japan's defeat in 1945, the Soviet Union occupied the communist wing of the Korean resistance, all of the land north of the 38th parallel, while the United States occupied Korea south of the line. The communist north was equipped with over 200,000 armed veterans who fought alongside Mao Zedong's Chinese Red Army against the Japanese, and then against Chiang Kai-shek in China's own bloody civil war. Their leader was Kim Il-sung, who saw the United States appointing former Japanese collaborators to top leadership positions in the South. His intent was to unite Korea under one communist ideology. By contrast, the unstable South was ill-equipped to defend itself compared to the battle-seasoned and well-supplied North. From 1945 to 1950, the South, under the leadership of Syngman Rhee, suffered massive civil unrest often dealing with popular demonstrations with violent police retaliation, employing tactics reminiscent of the Japanese occupation. Following years of cross-border raids and skirmishing along the 38th parallel, Kim Il-sung invaded the South on June 25, 1950, behind a barrage of artillery fire. Syngman Rhee was forced to flee Seoul two days later. On the third day of fighting, the South bombed the bridge crossing the Han River and were in full retreat from the North's advance. On the day of the invasion in 1950, the United Nations Security Council in New York roundly condemned North Korea's action, with veto-wielding Russia infamously absent from the session. Two days later, Security Council Resolution 83 was passed, recommending UN member states assist South Korea militarily. And with that, American President Harry Truman ordered the US Navy and Air Force, based mostly in Japan at the time, into action on behalf of the South. Less than two months since the invasion began, Kim Il-sung had driven the South Korean and US forces to Pusan in the southeast corner of the peninsula and was expecting an imminent and total victory in the war. At the time, China decided to position more than a quarter million of its troops along its Korean border, should the conflict escalate and the North's advance be repelled. After weeks of fighting around Pusan, the US had significantly reinforced the South, while American bombers degraded the supply lines and troop strength of the North. The army of Kim Il-sung was forced to retreat. Only 25,000 North Korean soldiers ever managed to rejoin their northern ranks. The South's counterattack successfully pushed across the 38th parallel and along with US forces captured the North Korean capital of Pyongyang. In response, China ordered its troops to cross into North Korea and repel the South Korean counteroffensive on October 25, 1950. Following two months of brutally contested warfare, US and South Korean forces were expelled from North Korea back across the 38th parallel. By January 4, 1951, North Korea had captured Seoul for a second time. However, as before following its invasion of the South in June 1950, North Korea lacked the logistical support to supply any further pursuit of the South. This gave US and South Korean troops time to quickly regroup, rearm, and retake Seoul. After six weeks of back and forth fighting, the US launched a full scale assault against the North Korean and Chinese forces in February 1951. For the rest of the year, fighting continued around the 38th parallel, steadily degrading into World War I style trench warfare brutal and mechanical. As casualties mounted on both sides, efforts at negotiating a ceasefire grew. However, several attempts at diplomacy were thwarted throughout 1952 and into 1953. With Korean civilian casualties approaching 3 million, 
a proposal was finally accepted by the United Nations, and an armistice agreement was signed on July 27, 1953. The result led the embittered North and South Koreans to create a demilitarized zone roughly along the 38th parallel, which has perpetuated the hostility of the two countries for six decades and counting.